Okay, so 10, 15 years ago, something like that, I was at the range. When I was at the range during this period of my life, I was angry. I was not having a good day. This was range therapy for me. So while I'm there, <laughs> a rookie cop with the county starts walking down the line, checking serial numbers on guns. Just was not in the mood to deal with it. Closed my case. And when he got up to me, he you know, kind of indicated he wanted to search it. And I told him, no, we had a quick back and forth. He put his hand on the case like he was going to do it anyway. My pistol was sitting on the bench in front of me. It had a mag in it, but the slide was back. And I put my hand on it. And he put his hand on his gun belt and radioed for backup. And we just sat there and stared at each other, waiting for backup to arrive. When backup arrived, sergeant rounded the corner, gun out, ready to go. And he saw it was me. And he did that. It's Bo again. Um, he did what a good cop does. Walked up and diffused the situation with a joke. You know, he asked the guy, he's like, what's going on? He's like, this dude said he's going to shoot me if I open his case. And sergeant looks down the range at the target I was shooting at. Looks back at him, he's like, well, I wouldn't open case then. You know, everybody laughed. The, the rookie cop got a, a talking to explaining that he can't do this and then the sergeant turned to me and explained that I should know better. At the end of the day nobody got shot and my case didn't get searched. Um, what if I had been black? You wouldn't be hearing this story right now. Man killed at range. Okay. So, I got questions, a few actually, from black people who want to start gun clubs for black people. And I told that story to remind the Second Amendment crowd that it's not the same. It is not the same. You know, uh, you're going to say, well, they don't have to do that. It's their right. It's our right. If they do the same things we do, they'll end up dead. Right now, they're, they're trying to flex their rights, advocate for themselves, and just get law enforcement used to the idea that a black person can be armed, and that's not a reason to shoot them. So you, you can talk about the Constitution all you want, but if they have a bad encounter, the only use of the Constitution would be to pack the wound. It's not going to stop the bullets. It's very easy for us to be ideological purists when we're not going to be the ones getting shot. Okay. So, now on to the actual advice. All right. It took me so long to respond to these questions, guys, because uh, it, it's a lot more complicated than I thought at first. You've got to get the rules of engagement established. Sadly, you don't get to, to uh, determine them. The cops do. And they may not tell you what they are. That's the first thing you have to fix. Get your club together, get your group of guys together, whatever, hold an event. And if you can, make it open carry, even though I normally don't like open carry events. Um, get the top law enforcement official in your jurisdiction there. Tell him whatever you have to, to get him there. He's going to talk about gun safety. He's going to meet voters. Whatever it takes, you get him there. While he's there, you let him talk about whatever it is he wants to. And you ask him directly. What is the preferred thing that law enforcement wants us to do during a traffic stop or getting stopped on the street while carrying? And you get that on video and you put it online. You get, you get those rules of engagement set. Then whatever it is, do it. I know it's not right. I know it isn't right. But you're trying to expand a right that you have that has been disused for so long, law enforcement doesn't seem to realize you have it. So at this point, you just want them to get used to seeing black people with guns. That's it. If they tell you to put your hands on the roof of the car the second you get pulled over, do it. Just do it. Okay? Staging that event. No MAC-10s. No Tech 9s No Brico, Jennings, High Points. Um, and to answer one of the questions that came up, is the high point really that bad? Yeah. Okay. Nothing that is stereotypically associated with a gangbanger. Again, it's not right. It doesn't matter. We're not talking about right and wrong. We're talking about keeping you alive. 
don't have any of that there. You don't want to reinforce that negative stereotype already. You'd be better off with everybody standing there with ARs. Okay, all of that advice was agreed upon. Where we diverged was how you should dress. Uh, two people said, dress as white as possible, using those exact words. Um, I disagree. I would go the other way with it. <laughs> I would stage it. So you have one guy that looks like he just got scooped up from jail, all right? And one guy in a suit and everything in between. Because while the idea of putting your best foot forward and everything, that sounds great, you don't want them to think that only black people dress like this are okay. You want them used to the idea that however you're dressed, you can be armed. Because you're not going to be dressed the way they approve when you actually encounter law enforcement. So I, I would actually make sure you have people running the spectrum. Okay, so th those are the key pieces of advice. And then from there, just make sure you comply. Um, not advice I ever thought I'd give. But anyway, <laughs> for what you're doing, y you want to set the example for law enforcement that they can have an encounter with an armed black person and survive because they've bought into their own propaganda and they're terrified. <sighs> okay, so now onto the, the more specific questions that were in these. Um, do we need to standardize? This was for the guy setting up the community defense stuff. Probably not. Uh, the Army does it because logistically it's easier to ship one type of ammo, one type of magazines, you know, than it is for, uh, for them to ship a bunch. In, in your situation, you should have six mags for your rifle. If you burn through 180 rounds during a community defense situation, the ability to exchange magazines with the buddy is probably not going to matter. I mean, that, that's, that's a lot of ammo especially when you're talking about a group, because it's 180 times however many people you have. Um, AR or AK, doesn't matter. I know that's, the, that's a hot debate in the gun crowd. It does not matter. The AR is a little bit more accurate at a little bit further range that you'll probably never shoot it at anyway. The AK is a little bit easier to maintain and a little bit more reliable. But in the modern versions of both of these, ne neither one of them is, is marked as, as the better weapon. They're both good platforms. Uh, and as far as standardization, that's going to kind of happen anyway, because once everybody starts shooting, you're going to find out half of them love the AR, half of them love the AK. And that's going to be what they have. Uh, <laughs> why does every white person... I mean, tell me I should buy a 1911. It only holds eight shots. It's like they're trying to make sure we're outgunned. <laughs> okay, the 1911 is a... Uh, it, it holds a special place in white people's hearts. <laughs> it's called the 1911 because it entered service in 1911. It, it is a very old design. And it stayed in military service until 91, I think. So... It, basically, every war movie that every every white guy's ever seen up until very recently has had the 1911 in it. It is, it, it's a staple. One, two world wars and all of that. It is probably the crowning achievement of firearms design of the 20th century. It is now the 21st century. You have other options available. If you don't like it, don't use it. Um, there are a bunch of 45 caliber pistols out there that hold more than eight rounds. But it's not that they want you outgunned. It's that they really, really do like that weapon. <laughs> um, is there anything else we should know? Yeah, put a first aid kit in your car. Your attorney will thank you. You don't just carry a gun. You're prepared for all emergencies. It's kind of like having a glove in your uh, car if you carry a baseball bat. Your attorney loves that. <laughs> um and you may actually need it. I'll also remember that. Anyway, so what you guys are doing, I think it's great. You're trying to expand the rights that are being exercised. But it is very, very dangerous. And 
in the beginning until law enforcement's attitude changes you're, you're gonna have to be very careful you're gonna have to be extremely careful I mean and you are not gonna be able to get away with what your white buddy does it's just they'll kill you they will kill you 